So let's walk through installing Server 2019 without a GUI. Now the installation process is going to be really similar. So I start up my virtual machine here. I've already got the VM created. We've got the install media ready for the VM. The install is going to be really, really similar to installing with a uh, with a GUI. There's just going to be one minor difference in that our endpoint looks really different. So, server 2019, language to install, time and currency format, uh, keyboard input method, we're good with all of that. We have the option, like we talked about before, to repair the computer or to just install. We're going to go straight install. Get through our initial setup starting. Again, I'm going to do it without a product key and we're just going to do an unlicensed trial version for the moment. Now. <laughs> This is what the only thing that's really different until after we get through the initial boot up process. So instead of uh, choosing Server 2019 Desktop Experience, we're going to choose Server 2019 without the Desktop Experience in parentheses. And notice that is the default option here. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And uh, the reason that's the default option, we'll accept the license terms and click Next custom install, we're going to use the whole space, so we're just going to click next. Now the reason this is the default option now is because running as a core install is actually going to give you a lot of advantages. It's going to be more secure, you're going to have to deal with less updates, uh, it's going to use less overhead, which means more memory, more processor time, more disk space devoted to whatever functions you actually have that server doing inside the network. So there's some really big advantages of doing a command line only install of server. Now, typically, what's going to happen is your first install is going to be a GUI based install. But after that, um, Server 2019 is designed for you to be able to admin it remotely. So what we mean by that is you don't have to go to the server and run the admin tools. You can run the admin tools from another server or even a workstation if you've installed the admin tools on it and admin servers that are somewhere else. So doing that, we can do our first install as a GUI install, get all of our GUI admin tools, and then we can do our other installs as core installs and then we can use the GUI admin tools on our desktop server to manage our command line only servers. And that's kind of the premise behind why we have that core install. Okay, um, we're done copying files, we're getting files ready for installation, installing features, installing updates. In just a second we're going to hit finishing up and we're going to reboot. So let's go ahead and hold on for a minute here rather than pausing our video and we'll click restart now to save ourselves a few seconds. Alright, and just like before, just like doing the uh, desktop experience install, it reboots, it's going to run through some processes, uh, it may, not always will it reboot a second time, but it may reboot a second time on you, and if it does, that's no big deal, it's just making some changes that it now has to commit. If it doesn't reboot a second time, that's fine too, it just didn't need to, um, to make all of those changes. All right. Here goes our second restart. So, so far there's only been one difference between installing the server in desktop experience or with the desktop experience and the server without the desktop experience. And that was just that one uh, difference we made when we selected the um, server that we wanted to install. Now, as it reboots though, now we're going to actually start to see the difference. As soon as we get done with this portion of the install. Alright, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this one because we don't need it. So. We now have a command line interface. And notice here, administrator users password must be changed. 
Okay. This is the same thing we did in the GUI before. We're just going to set our password. Changing password. Password has been changed. Okay. And here we go. We are in our alternate shell. We are command line only. Um, we have a smaller footprint. We're using less memory. We're using less disk space. We're using less processor time. We need less updates and we are inherently more secure. But we are running at command line, which means everything we do, we're going to have to do from command line. So um, we'll take a look at, so in desktop experience, we configure using server manager. In uh, this interface, in the core install, we can configure using PowerShell, and we can access that just by typing PowerShell, and that will take us into our PowerShell shell. We can exit to exit out of PowerShell, and you'll notice right here we're in PowerShell, now we're out of PowerShell. If we exit again, it closes our shell, but it doesn't actually take us out. So the server is still up and running, but now we have no shell active, which really gets interesting. So if that happens, hit your Control-Alt-Delete, and then you can lock, sign out, switch user, go to Task Manager, and we can go to... Task Manager, use my arrow keys down to go to Task Manager, and then from my Task Manager, go to More Details, File, Run New Task, type Command, and that'll bring my shell back up. All right, now how do I get out of here? Well, that's actually a little bit more entertaining because in uh, the desktop experience, we were able to shut it down using the shutdown tools that we're used to having. So we can try the shutdown command, and this will give us all of our options for how to shut down the system. You can also use, in PowerShell, use the stop computer. So, or stop dash computer. So here, I can use the shutdown dash s to shut down the computer. Uh, so, let me do that real quick. Shutdown slash s. We're about to be signed out. Go ahead and click close. Now, it's actually going to take it about a minute in order to uh, do the shutdown. And that's not unusual. Linux will do the same thing. Basically, it's giving a chance for everybody to close off the system. But after that about one minute delay, it'll go ahead and power off the system. So that is how we install in a install a server 2016. There it goes. Install a server 2019 server without a desktop.